to introduce my friend John, who is the president of the uh, Animal Valley Audubon Society, and uh, I just wanted to introduce and tell him, tell us what you're doing around here, and uh, tell you about some information. Um, he nice strikes the Deutsch. <laughs> my name is Don Dorsel, and uh, I'm the president of the Animal Valley Audubon Society, which is brand new, by the way. Um, the Animal Valley Audubon Society has been a group of gentlemen and ladies that have kind of a mom and pop type of organization. They never really have formed uh, an official chapter in the Animal Valley. <coughs> But uh, my wife is responsible for this, so it's all her fault. <laughs> she, <laughs> she put a spur under my backside, and uh, we took an interest in birds. And, and uh, of course, and I'm, I'm a photographer, uh, and have been for many, many, many years, uh, as a hobby, a very serious hobby. I've studied under people like Ansel Adams, and, uh, George O'Keefe and so forth, but, um, but when she started talking about the birds, I started getting an interest, and uh, then I found out that Holiday Lake, we took a drive out there, and somebody said that the birds come in there like crazy, so we go out there, and, and uh, well, where's the lake? <laughs> there ain't no lake, it's all bushes weeds and whatever. So I, I met the um, water district manager, which was um, a grumpy old man at the time, and I, but now I know why. <laughs> and uh, so he was, uh, when I hit, mentioned water, I hit a bad button. He didn't like that. So anyway, he said that the lake's dry. Not a drop of water in it. And the blackbird, the, the tricolored blackbirds are coming in. There's no water. What happens to the tricolored blackbirds? They're gone. They don't multiply. And just so happens that the tricolored blackbirds are an endangered species. So uh, they're, and it, they're even more crucial now because during their nesting and breeding times and hatching is when the farmers are cutting their crops. So what happens, the farmers come in and cut the crops, and there goes all the baby birds. And um, so I thought, well, wait a minute, this isn't right. The good Lord didn't mean for this to happen. So I, I started doing a little digging, and I finally got on the good side about um, Howard, didn't it? Yeah. And uh, found out what was going on. He says, well, we, they won't give us money for the water. And I said, well, okay, how much do you need? He says, well, probably around 10 grand for enough to pay the water, the electric bill to pump water into the lake. And I said, well, what happens if I get you the 10 grand? He says, you're out of your 11 mine. I said, well, that's beside the point. So uh, I went to Sacramento, met with the Audubon people, and guess what? I got 10 grand. And we gave it to the water company, and the lake has got water in it now, and we saved our blackbirds. Mm -hmm. So uh, these are the kind of things that the Audubon does. Uh, the other project that we're working on right now, does anybody know about the Prime Woodland Preserve? Prime Desert on 35th and K8? Uh, it's a beautiful natural park, and, the, and the, the building is very unique because it's made out of hay bales. And uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful building. But several years ago, the city took it upon themselves to sell a part of that land. And by rights, they weren't supposed to do that because it was supposed to be part of the wildlife preserve. Well, I stuck my nose in there and I opened up a big can of worms. And uh, we went to the City Planning Commission, we got a vote, we tied the vote to stop the building. So now it's with the City Commissioners, and with Rex Paris and so forth, to reevaluate the situation. 
The sad part of it is that there was money allocated to develop that property, but the city commission didn't use it. They sent it all to Santa Monica. Well, that money was supposed to have been here for the Antelope Valley. And we found that out through research and so forth. Well, that made a gentleman by the name of Patrick uh, Satsar and myself kind of angry, so we go to the city commissioners and say, and here we told them that hey, that's supposed to be part of the preserve. And um, so anyway, um, as it stands right now, it's in Rex Paris's office, and um, they're supposed to vote on it next month. But the beauty of it is there's $1.8 million from Proposition uh, back in, that, in 2002 that is set in there. It's not being used. So we're trying to get the city of Lancaster to put tags on that money to buy that property back from Royal Investments for $400,000. And uh, so that's, that's our other project that we're working on right now. And uh, this has all happened since the first of the year. So my wife turned a, 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 a madman loose. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the other thing that we're, we're just now getting involved with as of last Friday night is working with the, the uh, ornithologist out at Paiute Ponds. They've got a program where they really want to do some scientific studies out there and they've asked the entire Audubon Society, San Bernardino, Kern County, LA, uh, uh, Pomona, the entire circle around Paiute to join in to do a, a scientific study of Paiute ponds, why the birds come in, where they go, what they do when they get there. And they have asked us to be a part of that program as well. So uh, these are just some of the things that we've started since January. I think I let my backside kind of overload my mouth, but but that's not unusual. Um, I've been known to uh, raise some good money to do these kind of things. I was on responsible for raising 19.7 million dollars to build the Korean War Memorial. Uh, we've done projects like that, so this isn't a project that is out of sight. But the only thing we need is people, membership to develop the Audubon group. And so in our territory, according to National Audubon, is the entire <coughs> valley. And we want to work with people like yourselves, uh, different groups, so that we can accomplish these kind of uh, 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 projects like saving that 20.6 acres, what do we need 66 more houses for? <coughs> when we have so many empty already. And, and destroy a beautiful piece of property and, and lose habitat that will chase birds and, and, and wildlife away. We need to preserve and keep it. Thank you for your time. Don, yes, uh, we should get your contact information. Tell us how to get in contact with you in case we want to join the, um, the association. There's a website. <coughs> uh, we're in the process of developing a website now. All right. Um, a family that is interested has been very interesting to me over the years. Um, started out in Agudelsi. This picture is 1893, this family portrait um, taken in Los Angeles. That's Earnhardt Gipp, his wife Mary, um, three of their first children, Emile, that's him right there leaning on that, and Ida and the baby Bertha. In 1894, Jim came to Acton out of Los Angeles. And uh, he's looking for farmland. He traded, he found some up here, he traded two city blocks of land that he owned, owned for uh, the Agudelsi property. And the Gibb family moved to the flats in Agudelsi to start their new life. 
So, and number two, this is them. Um, 13 years later, this is 1907. Emile, that's him right there. That's Mr. Gibb in the back there. And now they have five daughters. And uh, it's Nettie, Bertha, Minnie's a little one, seven years old, Ruth and Ida. And in the background, you can see the first barn that he built, and it's surrounded by vineyards. And that barn is no longer there. The second barn he built is, uh, was in 1908. And 107 years later, it's still standing there in the middle of the Alcondelsi Vineyard. You, if you've driven by, you, can, you may have noticed it. No barn sitting out there. 107 years old, so you did a good job. For water, he installed 8,000 feet of irrigation pipe from a spring up above what today's is today's uh, High River Road. And uh, that's quite his farm and the vineyards. 1903, his wife Mary, she became ill and was bedridden for two years. And in 1905, at a hospital in Los Angeles, Mary died from falling out of a window at the hospital. Um, and with them, all the kids, he managed next. Go to, okay, this is a, a 1906 photograph. Oh, good job, sir. <laughs> can zoom in really well. <laughs> um, <clears throat> with the active school in the center there, that was completed in uh, 1890. And for the Gibb girls, it was a 17 mile round trip in their buggy. The dad, uh, Earnhardt, bought them a new buggy to travel back and forth to school. That schooling was very important. For them, according to him, I'm sure it was. It still is. Um, okay, number four. That's, <clears throat> that's Nettie Gibb. Um, that's taken from that other photo. But this young lady grew up to be Mrs. Eugene Ed Platts. She became a school bus driver, one of the first ones. And she was the mother of a school bus driver, Nani Platts Chamberlain, and her granddaughter, Doris, also became a school bus driver. So it, that's all right here out of the Acton uh, schoolyard, Acton School. This first section down here was finished in 1938. They moved out of the Red Brick Schoolhouse into the new one. And uh, all that's still there. Okay. They moved, uh, okay, we're going to concentrate on Nettie a little bit here. Um, this is uh, Eugene Platts and Nettie Gibb. They moved to uh, Pasadena, where Ed worked. I lost the part where they got married. Okay, Nettie Gibb was married May 30th, 1912. They met at the Hefner Ranch, that is today Thousand Oaks Campground. And uh, that's the next picture. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the Hefner Ranch. That's where Thousand Trails is today. Nettie's brother was the one that was running that ranch on the lease um, at acres and acres of alfalfa, and uh, it, it was pretty successful. And Ed Platts, he was a hamster. He just he worked there, and they met and got married. Um, then they moved to Pasadena, where Ed worked on the Electric Express streetcar line from L.A. to Pasadena. That was in 1913. In 1916, they took over the lease of this ranch, the Hefner Ranch, where they met. And uh, they came back to Acton, and, and this was actually a Ravenna then, and uh, made a living over there. And the Platts family lived on the Hepburn Ranch from 1916 to 1932, 1933. And uh, everything took off from there. Okay. The next picture is a 1930 picture of the Platts family. Um, they 
they moved to they moved from the Hefner Ranch in 1934 to the old Rayburn place, which is down there, just, uh, pretty close to where Country Way is now, and Platts Road. And um, that's we all kind of I know I kind of consider it the uh, Platts homestead because they they did build a lot of houses there. Um, Ed Platts worked as a railroad pumper for Southern Pacific until retirement in 1949. That's Ed, the big guy back there. And this is uh, Nani and all the children. And uh, these, uh, okay, Nettie, Virginia, and Eugene. Ed, Nani, a missing one. We'll figure it out. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. She raised it. She can raise some names on there. Yeah. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Alberta. Yeah. Just the one head. Most of the Alberta Bell. Okay. So he gets um, the names. Nani is the little one in the front there. Marion and Bud. Bud's the boy in the end there. <coughs> they all grew up around here. And, uh, it goes on from there. Oh, Wellington Roth and Alberta Platts married May 26, 1935. Um, at the Acton Presbyterian Church right here in town. And one of Alberta's children, Kathy, still lives on Platts Road today. Um, this is uh, in 1920. Yeah, that's their wedding picture. Alberta Bell was very active in acting. She was, um, well, all, they all were, but Alberta had a lot going on with the church. Uh, they had a musical group with uh, Tom Milburn's mom. I can't remember her name now, but uh, it was just the Friars, many people from Acton, the old timers. They, they just had so many things to do. And everybody from Arkadelsi came here, and even as far as Canyon Country, they came up here for a lot of these um, activities. The church was really big then. It still is. Okay, this picture, 1920 shot of the canvas covered Model T 18 passenger bus used on, for the Soldat Canyon run from Acton School. On the running board are Virginia and Alberta. These two up here. And uh, Alberta, Virginia Alberta Platts. Sitting on the fender is Buddy, their little brother. The guy right there. And in front of Virginia is Nani Platts, the one hiding right behind there. She's uh, you know, this is this is really a great picture. That was supposed to be the first school bus in action. Okay, in the next picture we have. This is Nettie Platts, the mom, um, daughter of Earnhardt Gibb of Aguadelsi, with her Model A Ford station wagon. She used that for a school bus, too. Um, these school buses were owned and maintained by the drivers, who they received 10 cents a mile for driving and maintaining their buses. Was that the district didn't purchase their own buses until 1947. And let's see, the next picture is Alberta and Virginia. Virginia's four years old sitting there. This is in 1921. Um, now Virginia, here's another local connection. She married Frank Dyer on June 25, 1938. And they lived in Acton for seven years. During that time, their two sons were born, Danny and Robert, or Bobby, as he's known by. In 1945, they moved to Aguadelsi, and they've been there ever since. And Bobby's still cruising around town here. I just see him all the time. It, <clears throat> the next picture is the Dyer family. <clears throat> Frank Dyer went by the nickname of Bunt. He told me, I met him years ago when I lived in Tick County. He used to bring his water up there. And uh, he told me one of his first jobs where he made any decent money was there's a lot of hand-dug wells around here. 
and he would get lower down in the well and dig it out and make a cavern out of it so it would hold more water. That was his job. That's how he made the money. Pretty rough and tumble people doing that. And uh, the two brothers, they had you know, dire bulldozing for many, many years around here. Uh, Danny told me the power line road going up the top of Acton, the original first one, they cut that in there. It took them quite a while. They camped up in the mountains while they did it. It was just too far to go up and down, back and forth. So that was a pretty cool story. Um, okay, the next picture shows Nani Platts. Okay, that's Nani and her husband. But uh, yeah, she was born in 1921 on the Hefner Ranch in Ravenna. And she attended the school, the Red Brick Schoolhouse to the eighth grade. And from there, Nani went on to Antelope Valley High School, graduating in 1941. And from there, in the next picture, is the uh, railroad uh, depot in Ravenna. The Southern Pacific Railroad hired Nani as a telegraph operator in 1942. That's where she worked for many years. And uh, she worked there at Vincent and Wayne Station. But uh, this was her, her home place. She worked there for years. Um, <clears throat> Nani and Hal, back to the other picture, they got married in 1945. And their daughter Doris was born in 1946. Okay. Um, beginning in 1955, Nani was employed for 27 years as a school bus driver right here in town. Her daughter Doris also was a school bus driver right here in town. And um, the, the family, and then Alberta's daughter, Kathy, still lives here in town. Jack and Kathy back here. Um, they're very busy in town, and they, they've been here since beginning. Um, I interviewed Kathy uh, maybe a year ago and one of the cool things I asked her, what's the funniest thing that ever happened in Acton that you remember? And she said, oh, easy. I know what that is. Um, down here by Thousand Trail, before Soul Dad went up over the top of the hill, they were little kids and a pie truck rolled on that road crossing one of the railroad tracks. And the kids, it, word got out like you know, computer, not a computer. All the kids were racing their bikes down there and they're going getting pies. They had so many pies they didn't know what it was. She said, that was the funniest thing. It was great. We had pies forever. <laughs> Did you hear about the one in Aguadolce that the truck were all over? No. Beer truck. <laughs> yeah. That was like in the 60s and all the kids, like um, Paul Clark, oh, that lives on Barber Road. Yeah, mm -hmm. he said the whole town was like, but this is the Gibb family, and you know, it all started in 1894 in Aguadalce, and uh, it's still going today. So these people have been in this town, and Aguadalce and Acton, that's the connection between Aguadalce and Acton. And, uh, Next time you're driving by the vineyard, take a look over there and look at the metal barn. It's still there, 107 years ago. It was built. So. Okay. Why don't you add on to that? Okay. Um, so let me switch the cards really quick. Um, we can talk about, like, if you guys want to throw us some questions, <coughs> we can do it that way. That's always kind of fun because that gets us talking about stuff that we might not have thought about. Any questions? Anything? I yes, lovely lady. You're, <laughs> you're talking about the vineyards. Now, when you talk about the vineyards, I think of the one off of Sierra Highway. I'm uh, sorry. I'm deaf one ear and I can't hear you. You have to scream it off. Oh, all right. You're talking about the vineyards? Mm -hmm. Is it the one on Sierra Highway? Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. and there's a barn there? There's a metal barn out there in the, in the middle of it. You don't notice it. It's it's after the entrance, right? It's west of the entrance. <coughs> it's just after Aquadosi Vineyard towards Reyes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and you see, it's not, it's not, you've seen it a thousand times, yeah. but you never noticed it. Like, I didn't, I didn't realize it until a couple years ago, and he's like, yeah, why don't you look at that thing? And I was like, <laughs> and I don't know who owns it now. Do you know who those people are? Luckily, they the don't owns the second vineyard. I wanted to take pictures. Oh, is that part of it? I thought it was a separate, separate, um, that's right.
No, it was the same guy that was at the Opera House event here. Oh, okay. Look his name. Um, yeah. Well, I'm always slow using this. I've been using a Mac for a long time, so these take me a while. <laughs> um, so I guess the big thing, too, that connected the towns was, uh, was the railroad. So we'll look at that map real quick. And if you guys are ever bored and looking for stuff to do, <laughs> um, Water and Power has a really cool online archive that has all kinds of stuff that's just digitized online. Um, and LA Public Library has this, so Bob can talk more about this. This is the one I posted the other day. Um, Let me zoom way in. Yeah, because I don't know my railroad history like I should, so I posted on our Facebook group. I was like, what are these circles? And then you get all kinds of answers. Yeah, some of them going against each other. But um, If any of you are on Facebook, um, Acton Agudosi History Books is a great ah. site. What is it? And it's a group. I think you're in it. It's hers. What's it called? It's very active. There's a lot of good information on it. Acton Equidulty History Buffs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there's um, uh, Santa Clarita History Buffs is the one that we use a lot too because that's got like 2,500 people in it or something. So it's, it's quite a few. And every one of our researchers. They love it. Okay, so this is, sorry if it's a little hard to see. Um, yeah, so here is, you know, Palmdale. Was Harold a station? Because that's why this map was interesting to me, because there was a few, like, I didn't know that Harold was a station. Um, oh, yeah. And then Santiago, was that a station? No. Okay. See, this is where, were can you see why I was confused, though? Because it's like a plain circle and a name, plain circle and a name. Oh. There's a lot of sightings. Right here in Acton, right where the, uh, the hardware store is, just beyond where the Acton Railroad Station was, there was a sighting called Berlin, and in, um, after when World War II started, after that, they changed the name from Berlin to Paris. That was the Paris sighting. They didn't want Berlin on there. But uh, I know when, my, when you find a location on your phone, Paris is still on there. It's part of Acton. I don't know why, but... Yeah. And same thing with water too. Like if you look at like Google Maps, it still shows that there's lakes in Aquadulce, and it's kind of interesting. Once they're recorded, it's like I guess because it could potentially fill up again or something. But it's it kind of that's kind of useful too. It's kind of surprising. Um, oh, so anyway, I, I pulled this one up because it's it's interesting because this is what connected the people of Acton and Aquadulce originally before everybody had cars. Um, so that spur line at Lang was completed in 1876. So a lot of people, surprisingly, would kind of hitch a ride on there. I heard like if they were having Friday or Saturday dinners down at the Borax Mine. Um, 1907 is when that opened. So after that time, people would come from Acton and they'd hitch a ride, and then hitch a ride on the Dinky Train at Lang and come up the canyon. So people really put effort into, like Bob said, being in touch with each other, which is a lot of us are like, ah, I'm going to stay home and watch TV watch Netflix, but, <laughs> but people really made an effort to get together back then. It's well, that's like the best way to go, then just ride the, exactly. the Dinky down Tin Canyon to the Lang Station and hop on the train and go to Afton. It would have been pretty, been pretty fun. Mm -hmm. And then their groceries and mail came that way too, so that was pretty... Mm -hmm. We didn't have anything in Aquadulce at first, so Afton and Ravenna, and where they were kind of the links too. <laughs> Aquadulce did have a malt shop though. I think you guys want to see the malt shop. A couple of you saw him the other night at the women's club, but you know. Hold on, I have too many pictures. Yeah, there's an awful lot of railroad history around here. Vincent, for one, was like a, uh, had a big turnaround there. I don't know that much about railroad activities, but they had a Y there. They had pusher trains in Harold down below. It helped push the train up the hill and then turn around in the Y, which is right where Vincent Restaurant is. And then head back down the hill and wait for the next train. But, uh, it's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. It's hard to picture it now. Like it's, I have to really make an effort to, to subtract everything that we have and picture what we used to have there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. And this is this is not really related to the connection with Acton, but you brought up the ball shop. So this is that little blue thing over across the street from the Old Women's Club. Mm -hmm. 
It was actually a mall shop. <laughs> they look solely different. <laughs> trees all around. Yeah, yeah is he the crazy? No, I don't want to update. Is that old man still living in there? He, I don't think he lives in it, but he owns it. Mr. Craythorn of High Desert Junior High School, the scariest teacher I've ever had in my whole life. <laughs> Mr. Craythorn. He's about this tall and he's terrified. He was my seventh grade. He was there when I started. Yeah, exactly. Really? Was that Danny Rose? Didn't you have him, Daddy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I consider Craythorn the proposition. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Bob Chester. <laughs> Miss Daniels was there for that. She was founding member, which is amazing. Um, so yeah, it's going to be stuff like this that we I wish we did more of now. You know, um, there's another uh, couple. They're out of order. We'll just click through for a minute. Um, here's another one again. I don't know where this picture was taken, but we saw again, we looked at this one the other night, but this picture just cracks me up because half of them aren't looking and half of them are dying laughing at something. Um, but still 38, so this is like 12 years after that other picture was taken. So they were going strong for quite a long time. Um, and these are just kind of fun to look at. And I know there's, there's more of these pictures. These are the ones that are in Heritage Happenings, Merrill Adams' book. Um, do you know, are there more of these? No. No. Um, I'm sure, like, I know somebody somewhere, you know, the grandkids of these women have more pictures. So we're, we're hoping they kind of pop up because they're really, they tell you a lot about the communities and how, how close everybody was. Even though, like, it, that's what's so funny to me is that they were so far away from each other. Um, and then, again, we, we saw these a couple nights ago, but um, these are some of the, so this is one of, before, the district bought buses, right? Yeah, that was the bus that went to Emerald Valley High School. Yeah, and if you talk to, um, there are fewer now, but if you talk to any of the people that were kids that went to there, they had parents that made that trip, these kids were gone most of the day. <laughs> like, they would have to leave so early, go all the way to Allen Valley High School, and then all the way back. And a lot of them played sports. And there was a dormitory. Um, hmm. The kids came all the way from Gorman to oh. KB High School. I know they had a dormitory there for some of the children, some of the kids. That's rough. <laughs> That's a big, big commitment just to get a high school education, which is pretty amazing. <clears throat> yeah, in our school, in Auburn Olsey, didn't even have an elementary school until 1912. So that's quite a while from when the Acton School was built. That's only <coughs> two years or something after yeah. it was built. Long time. And there wasn't a ton of kids in Auburn Olsey before that, though. Um, Ravenna and Acton area had a lot more families and younger people. And it wasn't yeah, even that so. many. It wasn't a yeah. big population, but, you know. So that's kind of fun. And then there's the other. This is an earlier one. And this is, is this an yeah. Acton? That, that must be the high school. Those are high school kids? Looks like it. The, I think these are the drivers. I mean, yeah, it's going to be LA. Yeah, sure. sure. I mean, LA high school. Yeah, we do. But we always no, laugh because. And, and you picture though the drivers weren't ever even very old. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> is that her? That was some. Oh, some it is her. Club. Yeah, see their little outfits. Mm -hmm. There like, were so many different so clubs in Acton that we'd all see. Um, just there were scores of them. We do a whole presentation on just a few. Again, see, so we need to start doing this stuff again. Get more involved. But they had a lot of fun, and, it, and I wish I would have brought them. Um, maybe at the next one I have. Uh, so in this picture, you can see oops, um, Leslie Wright, who was kind of, he was kind of like the, um, uh, like Nettie that, you know, drove a bus for a very long time. Um, he always did. And he, you know, he used to work at the mine, and then after it shut down, he, he had kids, and he started driving the bus. But... His son actually gave me his yearbooks from Manila Valley High School, which I was shocked that he gave them to me because he's like, well, you know, my kids and grandkids don't want them. So, <laughs> so they're from like 19, I think 1924 is the earliest one I have, and then they're kind of spaced up until the um, 1945 or six. Uh, but they have a lot of local kids in them because it was mm -hmm. that's where you had to go to school. So, but there is there's so like half the pages are dedicated to clubs and groups and activities and. It's amazing. And honor societies. And for, for rough living out here, they were very put together. It's kind of kind of interesting. Um, and I guess I'll show you this one too. And I'm sorry for people, this is repeat stuff. But this was another big um, kind of community thing. So we, we figured out. So this is, first one was 1951, right? No. 52 was the first one. This picture is 53. I always mess that up. Um, and this was the Sunrise Service at Vasquez. So that was a big one, and this drew a lot of people from Santa Clarita also, but it was also a lot of active people would come out. Which is funny because it's 
Looks like a dry cleaner. <laughs> and now we have a lot. We had, I think, how many was it? It's about like 1,400 on the Saturday before, and then we don't even know how many. We try to rough, I guess, but it's like over 2,000 people the day of, the morning of. So, very long standing tradition, but you know, a lot, again, a lot of active people that participate, a lot of OLC people. Um, and then another family, and this one is really tragic, and I don't know if Bob knows more about the, the farmers. The farmer? The farmer family. Yeah. So the, this and the, and the Gibb family were two of the earliest ones that we can tell in our little seat. Um, and this was her, right? The one that, mm -hmm. do you want to tell them what happened? I'm not she was, laugh. uh, I'm not laughing. I don't remember the date, but uh, they had a homestead down Sierra Highway, and uh, their last name was Farmer. Her name was Harriet, mm -hmm. and, but he was away in Los Angeles on business. And supposedly some a renegade, um, they could say he was an Indian, but it could have been anybody, came by and knocked on the door, wanted after some water, and she turned around to get water, and uh, he shot her. Oh. And the kids ran out the back, and uh, there was a big manhunt going on. Um, for the, the story in detail, you can see that on Santa Clarita Valley history. Um, and Harriet's uh, grave is still up above on the, the Melrose Ranch, was the Melrose Ranch, up above uh, <coughs> Raspberry Canyon. It's kind of uh, back there where that wolf thing is. The wolf come from. But to her, she's buried up there with her mother. <coughs> and, uh, it's sad. I mean, it's quite a good sized family to have left behind it. Pretty young lady. I don't think it was much long after this, right? She was, she was pretty young when it happened. Yes, she was. Yeah, there, was so a, there was a huge manhunt going on. And apparently, whoever shot her shot somebody else further down the canyon. And uh, they had uh, quite a big posse going out looking for them. And they never found them. Never found them. So that's a downer, but I mean, it's kind of an interesting part of, you know, like stuff like that, at least. As far as we know, it didn't happen often, so this one was a big deal, but um, it's, it's kind of interesting nonetheless. Let's look at, I'm trying to think, I feel like I, I, I've done a few of these now, so I'm trying to remember what I've shown you guys and what I haven't. <laughs> it's kind of hard. Um, let's see. Do you guys have any questions while we're in this? You, you can give us inspiration. I'm not running on a lot of sleep, so I apologize. <laughs> yeah, I have a question. That area in front of, um, in Albertville, in front of Asher, the, the original Asher Ranch mm -hmm. homestead, mm -hmm. where it's kind of marshy, that used to be a lake, right? It, it was more a marsh than a lake. It was like, how would you describe it? Probably years, thousands the of years ago. The water table there was very shallow. Mr. Asher told us they could take a shovel, stick a shovel in the ground, and water it. So the water table was always real shallow there, so it was yeah. always real marshy. So the county put drains in there to try oh. to keep it from getting all mushy, because all kinds of stuff would grow. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't like a nice, yeah. usable lake. Yeah, no, it was probably like thousands mushy. of years ago it was a lake. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it was like a big established, but there was always good water there, you know, which is why, like, that whole area is a village site from, you know, thousands of years ago, because that's where the springs. Yeah. The Albertosi Spring. Right there. That reminds me of a story. Okay. Um, Jim Schaefer. I'm sure he's got a picture of him when he's a baby, but he was uh, the family was this one? very busy in uh Agudelsi. But Jim Schaefer bought a drilling rig from the company I work for and he pulled it down, he owned some property, Agudelsi Canyon, just the other side of the freeway. And we pulled it in there and he wanted to learn how to drill drill well. So we drilled a well, we got down about eight or ten feet, water started pouring out. Um, we just started casing it and going down and we we drilled a pretty good well and the water wouldn't stop flowing. Um, the well, uh, what, maybe nine months ago they were doing some grading down there. Well, we buried it. He didn't want to pay taxes on it, so he capped it and buried it. So I'll do something with it later. He never did. <coughs> but they were grading down there for drainage. And they uncovered the casing, and uh, 
I stopped and had my hands down and just stores. The store, it was a state project and they're just uh, cleaning up because they didn't want the mountain to wash out or something. And he found my well. It was tough as that is. I told him all about it, but uh, yeah, there, there's no water coming out of it now because of the drought, I'm sure. But, yeah, Jim Schaefer was, uh, and then we went to Bakersfield and drilled some oil wells with the same rig. He was quite a, quite a guy. Went to high school with his daughter, Lonnie. Canyon High, first day open. Yeah, Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> that was good out of Mr. That high school. <laughs> Mr. Craythorn was there then. He's been everywhere. Yeah. I swear. <laughs> he was still there in 82. Mr. Craythorn? Yeah. Yeah, see, as long as I can remember, he's been out here, but I didn't realize, like, all, you know, a lot of people out here had him, too, which is so funny. And Mr. White Key. And Rosie Romica, do you remember her as a counselor? We never had a counselor. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> wow. We had a counselor part of my freshman year, and he got fired for yelling at a student. <laughs> we had a little rough go. I had, at the time I was a best guest, we had like six principals. So <laughs> I was in that transition period. <laughs> but it was good though. We had a lot. We had a lot of good teachers. Um, and then Maxine Erickson, I don't know if you guys, do you ever have her, do you remember her? She's another one that a lot of local kids out here, well, kids that are now in their, like, 50s, <laughs> have her. And my, she was actually my sister, who's almost 30, her kindergarten teacher, too. But you talk to a lot of people who've lived in Omarosi a long time, and um, she was there for one. Same thing with Mr. Craythorn, like, when she was young. She started and she stayed in the district her whole career, very long time, but really, really interesting. That'd be another fun one for us to talk about too, is like just the staff that's come through our, our district over the years. Um, sure. Was you have any questions? Not 46, <laughs> either 45 or 47. My brain is mid not. Mid-40s. Yeah, mid-40s. <laughs> um, but Goldie Dawson was the teacher then, which I love her name, Goldie. Um, but they had a hillbilly contest to like celebrate the, you know, the, the end of the year and everything. So they used to do a lot of fun stuff like that too. And, a lot of, I heard a lot of the active kids, you know, parents and friends would come participate. They'd have bake sales and stuff like that. But the hillbilly contest, I feel like, should definitely make a comeback. I've heard it. I was in. And I guess another one, I feel like uh, this is a good one to kind of look at too. Um, the highway, so after, with, with the railroad, was obviously a big connection for us, but then the, the highway was too. Um, so 19 teens is when um, Mid Canyon Highway really was because it was kind of a packed trail before. It was like we don't know exactly how old it is, but it could have even been a, a native trail that was used for a long time. Um, and then in the 19, I'm so sorry, I'm forgetting all of my dates. Um, late 20s, early 1932, it was made into Highway 6. Anybody remember that one? What, Sierra Highway? Yeah, it, so Sierra Highway is much newer, the name. Um, it was always Mid Canyon Highway. It was Mid Canyon Highway and then Highway 6. Um, and it's neat because that was the first continental continental highway in the, in the country, which, which is kind of cool. Um, but that was a big win for us also, and that's where a lot of the businesses started to develop here too. Um, like the one at Zimmer Farm was a Gas station, right? Oh, down here on the corner, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, it's B. Yeah. Yeah. Pub B, uh, we've got some pictures that, that used to be um, uh, Merle Adams' dad opened up a shell station there in 1921 when they paved the road, paved the Sierra Highway. And uh, if you look at the buildings, you can see where they built in, where the cars used to pull in, they did service, and uh, it's the same building, it's still there. Yeah, and I didn't even know that. That's why the Facebook groups are awesome. Somebody posted an old picture of that, and I, I didn't know it was even old until recently. <laughs> but we had places, um, so these are the types of maps. So when we got these highways developing, they would really, uh, like California Auto Club would really push for it. You know, because it was a big economic boost, you know, with the car, cars themselves, with highways, with rest stops, with uh, gas companies. Um, this is a fun one. This is a AAA 
Turing map, but I think it's 1929. Um, there are some from the 19 teens also that show this group. Yeah, but, yeah. I thought I did. On uh, yeah. many of you are on Facebook, we have a page, Act and Historical Society page, it's not a group. But uh, on there, there's a lot of interesting stuff. I've got a map of Acton and Norman this area here from 1919. And it's pretty neat to look at where the roads used to be and where they weren't and where they are now. New it's it's really up. interesting. Sarah, go down this New Hope, or there, New Hope New Tunnel. Is that like <coughs> Neil's flood or what? New Hope Tunnel? No. no. The, see, the tunnel, tunnel is a whole other interesting... It's by Beale's Cut. It's yeah. near it, yeah. It's, it's, near it. it's not the same thing, but it's close to it. Oh, it's okay. actually... The, is, is part of the tunnel still there? No. No, see, I always hear different answers to that, and it's like, some people are like, no, it's not, and somebody the other day is like, yeah, part of it is, and I'm like... Sierra, Sierra Highway removed the tunnel. That's right, so they, they filled it in. It just... Yeah, but that was one... This was really amazing because it took... <coughs> about a thousand Chinese laborers and about 500 um, American workers that they were in basically in a race to finish that the spur line um, for the railroad in 1876 um, and you had crews that started at either end and they met in the middle but I mean they you guys have seen the mountains and they're kind of where the four, 14 and the five meet like they had to pour through that I think it was 7,000 feet or something of rock it was Pretty, pretty amazing, and they had to go through. And the other crews were going to hatch a piece to come through this way. Well, you're talking about the railroad tunnel. I'm sorry, the the road, the New Hall Tunnel usually refers to the road tunnel that's no longer there, but the train tunnel. You, you ride Metro Link, you go to that tunnel. Yeah. Well, I yeah. thought, I thought initially, did they reroute the railroad? No. For that it's the same no. tunnel. That was there in 1876. When yeah. Started. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm confusing everybody. There was a tunnel um, on Sarah Highway. Sierra Highway used to go through a tunnel also. The road tunnel, tunnel yeah. Yeah, and that's the one that's still there, right? No, no, no it's not. No. The road tunnel's gone. Where was that at? Pretty close to where Beale's Cut is. Oh, okay. There's a lot, and that's another one on the Santa Clarita historical site. There's a lot of cool pictures of it. So you can actually kind of see where it, where it is. And where it was. Those of you who don't have a Merle Adams Heritage Happenings, I think uh, Gail has those. <coughs> or not the books, but on video. DVDs. Uh, DVDs of the, mm -hmm. the book at the Acton Agudelsi News. You have those now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are looking for the books and you can't get them, but you can get the, video, get the disc. Yeah. And then you can just print out the page. You know, each page is um, digitized. So it has everything. It's all, you know, in succession. Yeah, you can find the original ones, but now they're, they used to be in like the 100s, which is how I got, bought mine again. Um, but now they're like 350 and 400 dollars, which I think Meryl would get a kick out of that, knowing that her book is so, yeah. is such a hot ticket. But yeah, if you guys ever see one, grab it because they're pretty, pretty hot ticket. A lot of us lost our original ones. People would borrow them and not give them back. So if you get one, don't let anybody borrow it. <laughs> we have one here in the library and it disappeared. So, I'm telling you, almost or you couldn't take it out of the library for viewing here only. Almost every person that I've talked to that has an original one, like the Jennings, I think yours is gone, right? Or you know it where it is? just laid out. I know where it is. Okay. No, you like, better still have A lot of people, go to my, my, my family had one that my dad bought, you know, brand new. Like, they all disappeared. It's like the socks in the laundry. <laughs> it's weird. But, um, but yeah, it's a, like they have, uh, like if you saw um, her lovely husband a few months ago, he, he talked a lot about it. So it's. That's a really good resource, and that's where a lot of the pictures of the Git family, and um, they're in there, and it talks more about that. Because a lot of the research and stuff that I've been doing is a little bit more on the later families, like in the 20s and 30s and, and 40s and on, um, which is why, like, unfortunately, a lot of the pictures that I brought, because I'm scatterbrained right now, are, are of that, but um, I'm trying to think of which ones would be good to show you guys for, for that. Because it was basically just a network of everybody was still, you know, and a lot of the friendships like Bob was talking about that started even at the turn of the century, they lasted. You know, you have these families that were really, really good friends for a long time. And 
families like the Dyers who are connected, mm -hmm. you know, like they're also related to the Ritters of Ritter Ranch area. Oh, yeah, the cousins. And the Mitchells? Was, were they married into the Mitchell family at all? And the Crackies? Probably. Just really good friends with them. I mean, you know, like you guys have heard of the Mitchell Dyer Cemetery, so they were very close. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah this, this Dyer stones in the cemetery. Yeah, I just can't remember if they mar if somebody married a Mitchell or not. I always heard, like, Paul. Paul Dyer used to always tell me that. <laughs> so, so I'm not sure. That would be a good question for more of the... So you got to get some Dyers in here to get... Are they related to the Honey House? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is them. Yeah. And I do have, and I wish I, I wish I would have brought them. I just ran out of time, but I have some pictures of, of those two that were like Letty's pictures and um, really cute pictures of Bobby when he was little and um, just some of the different. And, and that family alone, we could do two presentations on just the Dyer family because they have some people. The way they live is more more laid back. You know, they just kind of go along to get along. The Dyers always had a lot of really Fun stories and, and the diary were it all started with Mr. Gibb. Yeah, and so <coughs> that was a very like very important family. You don't really get you know after the time that our native population out here went to the San Fernando Mission, there wasn't a lot of things going on in, in the Aguadosi area. Um, we had some speculators coming through and stuff, but there really wasn't anything until the mine came in. And before that, it was like families like the Gibson, the farmers were kind of on their own. It was kind of yeah, in the 40s, um, for voting, um, they didn't call it Abedosi. It's called the Sterling District after the Sterling Borax Mine. And that's an interesting so. one, too. Is I don't, do any of you know more about Sterling City? Have you ever heard that? <coughs> so that's one. Do you know about that? I've been trying to look more into this. So before it was... So in, this, in the um, 1700s, it started being referred to as Aguadolce, but it was known by that, but also not known by that at the same time. So I can't, and, and we talked about this at the Women's Club meeting, we can't figure out exactly when the Aguadolce name really stuck um, as a formal name, because all the census records will say Soledad Township up until pretty recently. Um, but things I've also read have said that near that there was a potential town that they were trying to set up near the Borax mine that was called Sterling City. Um, but you only find traces of it. There's no really good information well, what on it. Went down to Canyon a little bit. Mm -hmm. There's uh, the buildings are still there. It was um, like a, a store, um, like a mine company store. Mm -hmm. And they had a blacksmith shop there too. Um, there's probably at least a half a dozen buildings that are still there. And that might it's be what they were talking rocking. about. Yeah. And I'm trying to remember what, I have them written down, but the resources that refer to Sterling City <coughs> say that it was down the canyon. So mm -hmm. I think they didn't anticipate that the mine wasn't going to last that long. I think they really thought if they would ride it out a lot longer than they did. Um, it was less than, it was like, you know, 15 or 16 years that it was open. It really wasn't very long. So. In that short time, the hills around there is peppered with homesteads. Uh, there's still a, a handful of them up and around there. Some have been, some have been built into homes now. Um, it's, there was a lot, a lot of homesteads up there. Yeah, and you see, um, not a lot of these, but, so this is the Mitchell homestead, or Mitchell, the, the big farmhouse. And where was that? And this picture cracks me up. This is the one that's up. Um, I saw this for the zone. Yeah. 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 Torn down. Yeah, which is so unfortunate. And we always laugh at this picture because so this is 1905, and look how old it looks. <laughs> it didn't look that old when they tore it down. Yeah, they must have done a little facelift because I always heard that everybody's like, yeah, it was a pretty cool. I used to keep my horse, the property right there. So yeah, I mean, I used to go in and talk to the people that lived there. They were it was a young couple. Yeah, and, and then an old guy that lived in the adobe house. And when did they tear it down? <coughs> Do you remember, like what year? Uh, it was? So that house was seventies, late seventies. Yeah. So that house was up for quite a long time. Where was that house in relation to the school? If you go down this road, and Silver Springs is here, and then there's those few houses there. If you kept going on the dirt road where they plow it all now, it kind of set back towards the road oh. around the corner there. Is there anything on it now on the side, or is it just? No, they're building condos there. No, they're tearing it down. Yeah, they just it looks totally different there. I don't know who I was with the other day, they got a big surprise. Did you know that there was a graveyard up there? 
I said, what, the initial graveyard? Yeah, that's up. So, like, everybody does. I've done that for 50 some years, you know? Yeah. So I was like, when I, when I was in high school, that was the haunted house. <laughs> was the haunted there was a party there. outside the haunted house. <laughs> oh, I bet. Mm -hmm. See, I'm trying to think of what that was for. Uh, oh, when we were younger, we used to poke around the, the, some of the mine shafts up. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, really stupid. <laughs> but it was, it was fun, though. <laughs> That's how I got introduced to acting. We used to cut school and come up here and play in the mines. And thinking back the way those rickety ladders were going down there and, and the rattlesnakes and the bats and pigeons, it was, it was a Yeah, I don't know how we're not all the children's paradise. That's supposed to have been sillier than ours. And then this, this is at that house again, too, which is kind of a fun picture. And so um, this is with Tony Held, and they lived in, in town in Aquabelsi, like by the by the hardware store. Um, so it wasn't too bad of a jaunt, but a, like this is another example of the families that were really really close with each other. What is? Is there something hanging? Yeah, yeah it's a deer. deer. Oh, okay. <laughs> Back when we actually had deer. Um, and then this is another one of uh, Geneva Held at the at the Mitchell House. Yeah, so it was pretty, like, they were very, they made a very big commitment to being, you know, close with each other, which is, I think is very endearing. It's very important. Um, I don't think what else you guys would want to... I had a question that, I don't know where I saw it or where I read it, about a lady, I think it's two people, but a very, up on a hill behind, um, Thousand Trails? Yeah, that's what I was just talking about. Yeah, that's um, um, that the one you were talking yeah. about? Matt yeah, Corner, okay. the one that was killed by the so Okay. Indian. And there's, again, the on, the, on the Facebook group, there's pictures of it, of her um, that somebody posted recently. And hers is the one that's all broken up, right? It's all cracked. And, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's a beautiful view, though. That's the thing is when you see, there's not a ton of burials out here, but the ones you do find, they're all in really beautiful spots, which is kind of. For us, like for all we'll say not having a cemetery, which I'm still figuring out why we didn't, but <laughs> that doesn't, I'm like, where are we? But, um, there's, a, there's a new one in that one. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know Is that brand, brand new? Brand new. Really <laughs> populated. <laughs> a lot of people there. Um, it's not that overnight. They're dying. It's just funny how to work people, you know, mining people. I'm kind of all over the place, so I don't have a thing, which is. I, have I know a little bit about a lot of things, but then people are like, what about this? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Trying to, um, what is that? It's not a stamp, no, I don't think. It's what? The, the Puritan mine one? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's talking about trying to preserve that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was talking a lot about was that. Um, yeah. But that one, so, because they're just, they're just hanging out on that, right? You talk to the property owners, right? Mm -hmm. And they're just kind of watching it, protecting yeah. it. Where's the mine at over there? <laughs> is it over the hill? Which mine? Puritan. Oh, you can see, oh, that's, that's it, on Puritan Mine Road. Um, um, but where was the actual mine, though? The actual mine, you can walk up to the actual mine. Um, you walk up, there's a big, um, in a rascal up there, a big stamp, stamp mill. It's still there. It's one of two in Southern California that are in the same location as where they brought them in. Up behind that stamp mill, uh, you walk up on the hill, there's two shafts up there. They're covered with chain link, but they're, uh, they're still there. I mean, it's one you can't like really see if you road like you can the others. <laughs> well, you go up, uh, up Escondido, turn on Pure in my road, and then it's, it's actually on Old Stage Road. Oh. Old Stage Road used to be Escondido at one time. We so put the freeway and moved it. But yeah, you can't miss that. That uh, stamp mill up there. I guess yeah, it looks like a giant wooden chair. Yeah. yeah. See, and that's another thing that's been there this whole time, and I didn't notice it until a few years ago. Really? And I happened to look out the window, and I was like, "What is that thing?" Because it's pretty. Have you guys seen that? Do you know what we're talking about? It's, you, can, you can see it off of the 14 freeway as you're driving. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And it's right aside from their fence, their fence line, and then it's right there. But um, it's a, it looks like a big wooden chair. But that's another one that's really. There, and that was a spot, too, that kind of drew people from both communities also, because it was kind of in the middle, more, yeah. <laughs> more than some of the really far ones. But, yeah, it basically, you had to work wherever there was something available, and not, most of them, like, Puritan 
didn't last very long either, right? There's a, uh, there was so many mines around here. There was ads in the paper I found ads from the 1800s up into the, the teens where they, they need miners. Um, yeah. They need people working there. Yeah. So it was big money. Even little kids. Governor Mine, <laughs> um, which was originally the New Yorker Mine, was uh, the biggest gold producing mine in Southern California. And uh, there's still, according to the, oh, I just, I just it was for sale a few years ago, and I found some, an app, a geological map of everything, and, and they're saying there's still a lot of gold in there, and they were trying to sell it on that basis. It's an interesting yeah. operation. <laughs> yeah, and we'll have to, um, we'll put a presentation together maybe on just all the different, the different mines, because the one I know most about um, is the borax mine, and I'll see, but the, the acting ones, all the various, ones were really, really interesting. Um, Red Rover and the one above the high school. I forget the name of that one. They have yeah, versions yeah. going that, yeah. A little dirt road going back to it. Anybody else? I'm sorry, but I don't have, and to be frank with you guys, that I'm three or four weeks away from finishing my master's. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really, really underprepared and I'm really tired. <laughs> So that's why I'm sorry so I don't have like a ton of, I keep, I kept trying to think of things and you know, ran out of time to put stuff together, but um, yeah, but it's good that, because Bob and I always talk, because he, he knows a ton about Acton and I know a lot about all the real estate, um, and there are a lot, just a lot of connections, but it, it's, it's hard for us to relay them to you guys too, because a lot of it wasn't even documented, you know, like these people were making livings where it was really rough out here. So a lot of them didn't have cameras. You know, like the families that you do have more pictures from are usually a little more well off. Um, like the Asher family in Albertolsi, like we literally have hundreds of their pictures because they were really, really wealthy. Um, but the guys that were, like the Hanawalt family, that was a big one in Albertolsi, and he was the stonemason on almost everything out there. I have like two pictures with them in it, you know, and they are Asher pictures. <laughs> um, so there were a lot of connections too, but also people didn't didn't write everything down. You know, they wouldn't write down. Oh yeah, I'm headed over to Acton yeah. to you know have dinner with you know Friday night dinner with our friends, and it's and we're slowly we find stuff. You know, like with the people mm -hmm. like Don Milburn that have a lot of really cool old stuff. But it's that's Some why it's good told to talk me to you guys. Research is endless. It is, it is, and that's why it is. we've been trying to do you know um, build on here to happenings and do more books and stuff. But it's hard because as soon as you write something up and finish it, you'll find something that either proves you wrong or is different than what you thought. Um, but it's good though, the more people, more like you guys that come and show interest in it, like that helps, you know, people that, that find things. And there's another one that very recently, my friend, um, he lives out of state now, but he went to Vasquez High School. He has pictures of the, oh, I'm blanking out on the name. It's a very strange name, and I hadn't heard of them before, but it, he has a photo album that he got at like a yard sale, but it's actually a very old in family, which is really interesting. Wow. Um, I can't think of their name. It's like an Italian name, but... It, it'll come to you. It'll, yeah, it'll, I'll think of it at midnight tonight, and then I'm going to call all of you and be like, oh yeah. I'll think of it probably before we leave, but it's stuff like that, and he just happened to ask me. He's like, I know you're into this stuff. Do you know who this is? I was like, I have no idea who that is, but there's pictures, you know, and they're in Acton. Mm -hmm. Um, and around town, and they're really awesome. And, and then I posted on the Facebook group again and asked, like, does this name sound familiar to anybody? And a great grandkid was like, oh yeah, that's my family. But he lives in like Texas now, um, which is kind of funny. But he happened to find that that Facebook group. So, uh, so the more we network and talk and get you know people talking and um, I'm like, well, tell them how you found the minutes from the school district. Stuff like this happens a lot too. Oh, in the books? Yeah. The um, yeah, I found I'm in possession of the the board handwritten board minutes from the act the Soledad Arcadosi School District is started in '39 when they opened and goes up to the late '40s and uh, I pulled them out of the trash. Literally out of the dumpster. <laughs> and uh, we we'll put the propane tank in there down to school. And I was doing the electrical for it, and they had to clean, move a shed, and the guy that was in there was just throwing everything in the trash. 
blueprints. I took all. I took everything out. So I gave them to back to the school. You know, you're gonna might need these someday. Blueprints, uh, those books, all kinds of stuff. It's pretty amazing. I'm glad I was there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you get that but, uh, that type of lucky happens quite often. There's some funny, funny stories in those uh, board minutes, and they were. They hand wrote everything, every word everybody said. And it was just, some of the names that are in there, the board members, the people that were there, it's just it's like um, all the important people that were involved in everything in town, they were there. They were involved in it. You needed uh, chalk and the eraser, the board had to approve it. Um, stuff like that. Yeah. And every, like at least when I was growing up, there was a lot of drama and stuff with the town council and the school board and all mm -hmm. this different stuff. It was exactly the same back then. There's arguments that are written down like in painstaking detail. Yeah, there was a big so problem. Good. Somebody somebody said uh, they saw one of the school bus drivers um, drive over the tracks when the wigwag was going with students <laughs> on the on the bus. And he denied it and you know I guess there was like Ten crossings with the wigwags, remember the old arms that went like that with the bell dinging? And uh, they didn't have the arms in. But it was quite a battle. And uh, they're like yelling at each other. Yeah, <laughs> I'll have to print that out and yeah. put it on the Acton Historical Society page. So check it out. But that's another, that's another good one, too, that, that shows you have two sides. And a lot of more active people, I mean, we're all mostly people, but it's so similar to today, and like the stuff we were going through when I was a kid, like I can't even, I can't even tell you this. Mm -hmm. They're really, really, really funny. Like, it's like so and so exclaimed, and you find a kind of back his rocks geology hiking uh, patch. I posted some of the names, some of the stuff on there on uh, Facebook on Animal Valley um, group, and surprisingly got a lot of responses. Yeah, my brother used to race there, my dad raced there. Where was it? Where was it? Yeah. Right in front of where Melbourne School is right now. Oh, okay. That's a pretty popular place. Does anybody else got any, have any questions that we could answer, try to answer? That photo looks like there could be a fire in the background. Is that fire or is that just clouds? I don't know. That's why I didn't intentionally put that as much as happened to be there. This is um, Asher Ranch. It is? Uh huh. Is that a right Well, no, I recognize that, but I just thought it was further away. So, right. like, the ranger office is down here. Oh, now. that's really cool. Yeah. And I don't know if it's... Is that Davenport Road? Yeah. Wow, that was, in, that was there then. Oh, cool. You can see the croquet court, too. Yeah, it's right here. There's a croquet court. Oh. And we'll have to... And I can do another Asher... How many of you came to the other Asher talk a few years ago? Oh, it was the day after daylight savings time changed. I got there an hour late. Oh, I was so mad. You did? Yeah. So oh, I did. What the heck? And then I go, oh. Did you see this? We'll do, we'll do that one again. Yeah, that was good. You're right. Can you see the pole? Can you see the pole? Did you, did you just tell Sarah about the trip yes. of the Asher Brothers in the like, brand new truck? Oh. Yeah, well, that's for another time. Yeah, we'll do another. <laughs> we'll do more. And I swear, as soon as I'm done with school, I'll be sharper for you guys. I feel, I feel so bad that I'm such a ding bat right now, but you know. What would what would be nice for us? Because I mean, I lived out not in this area, but in the country for 50 years, and then out of here for about six. But I've been in and out. Of yeah, you've been all over the place. <laughs> but you know, I look at this, and I know. It's that mountain, but uh -huh. where is this at exactly, you know? So when we bring pictures, give us a, like an aqueduct and map and say, this is where this happened. Okay, this yeah. Happened. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah, and then we can, I'd always like to do with a lot of these too is um, before and after pictures. Oh, yeah. Because a lot of it really looks um, the same, but then a lot of it looks like, a lot of it looks really, really, really different. Um, but we've got a lot of fun pictures of other stuff too. I've got like all kinds of filming stuff where the rocks look exactly the That's an area that looks exactly yeah. the same. But, um, yeah, but it's mostly some like some of the rocks. That's good rocks. <laughs> I thought it was up Bee Canyon or uh, somewhere in that area, and I was trying to do the background. And I'm driving up Lost Canyon one day.
to a job and looked over and there it is. I saw it, took pictures, oh, I was all happy, posted it. Again, but, you get lucky. And then, well, they, that came out of the Huntington Library, I uh -huh. their archives, so I notified them that you have the wrong location on here, and they did their own research, went out and checked it out, and they said, thank you. It has been corrected. Good. Good ball. Cool. And that's another one is we do have their stuff from here in some of the big art, like USC has some, UCLA. Huntington, unfortunately, is you have to basically be in a PhD program to get in there. So I'm trying to figure out how to ski talk. So when are you going to start? Start your PhD. Never. I'm dying as it is. <laughs> I'm dying. But it's okay, though. Um, but we have, you know, some fun projects that are going to be in the works and Stuff like that. So, uh, exactly. Anybody, any other questions, or I guess we'll let you guys. You know, I think it'd be interesting to hear about all the big cattle ranches that are back in these Sierra Blue Mountains here. Yeah, which I mean, like Firestone Ranch. What's the history on that? Yeah, that was that was really really mm -hmm. interesting too. And I don't know the earliest one, but it it. Firestone Ranch. Really old though. Yeah. Yeah, that was built by mom. Yeah, that, so have you been back there? Yes. Have you seen that weird, that weird white? Well, there's that white house and then there's the castle. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah? Oh, I don't really go back there that often. But it looks like gun turrets on top of it. Right here. Yeah. That was built by Mulholland. It was like a getaway place for the, uh, the water yeah. district people to get away on the weekends and stuff. Yeah. And, there's, and that's another area too. A lot, of, a lot of old mm -hmm. um, Tatavian inhabitants back there. They have. There's a lot of water and a lot of. A soapstone market the other day. Was it the Elizabeth Lake monster yeah. or something? Yeah. You guys need to Google it. Remember Chris did the drawing of the story? Is that the Pterodactyl one? Yeah. Oh! Yeah, really yeah, I just saw it like two weeks ago. I was like, yeah. what is this? So that'll be the new Active Historical Society shirt with the flying Pterodactyl monster. The problem lake's dry right now. I bet. <laughs> There's a bottom. Is, it, is there it's, a carcass in there? Uh, <laughs> she's not there. No pterodactyl? I don't see no. her. She's, she's flew the dive plane somewhere else. Yeah, she's, she flew the dive plane. She's at Holiday Lake. There's water there now. There you go. There you go. So a lot of little weird stuff. And that was old. That was 18... I don't know what I just... It was a so long, long, long time I've seen it like two or three times on TV. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah. We've got a couple of members of our group. Uh, uh, Michael uh, Zink, his family goes back to 1889. Yeah, out here. Jason. Jason Zink. And, uh, and, uh, um, how do you say his name? Satsar? Patrick Satsar. Patrick Satsar. He's a, a doctor, uh, Physicist. Physicist that's been out here for rocket scientist. Yeah. Wow. Going back his family goes back to the early, early nineteen hundreds. So And he's still around here? Well, he's part of our club. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and you have a lot of people that and it's people that you wouldn't even expect. A lot of people don't talk a lot about that. And then it's like, Oh yeah, my great grandma lived here. It's like, what? Then we have uh, Michael's uh Vinsky. Which is from Acton. He's a doctor. Yeah. He lives right here, and he's been his family's been here for nine to hundred years. Yeah, and that's the other thing. I'm glad, like a surprising amount of people that were from here also went on to really impressive careers too. Yeah. Um, which is kind of I don't want to say surprising, but for such humble beginnings, we have a lot of really educated people like that. That girl Geneva that I was showing you that was with the horse. She was one of the first women to go to um, Stanford, which is kind of interesting, and did the program there. And her, uh, I think both of her boys also went to Stanford. Um, and then same thing with the Ashers, to the Asher boys. They both went to Harvard, and then came, um, the one got a PhD from Cambridge, which is kind of, a lot of smart people coming out of here. I don't know. Well, I can remember the groundwater, I don't know. Yeah, the water. It's the water. It's the water. I can remember coming through here about 1938 in a diamond tea chain drive truck. I love it. That's good. Yeah, and it's, it's changed a lot, but not at the same time. I mean, it's, you know, like the, oh, I'll show you, show you one really quick. I think I have it on this drive. Um, this is, we're talking about stuff that's changed and hasn't changed. Um, 
I guess this, this will be a good ending one unless anybody has questions about anything else. Um, but I love this picture though. If it's, oh, please tell me I have it in here. right by the fire station in Old Little Sea, right on the side of the road, on, C on Sierra Highway. Um, that was, it was a 1938 film, the last silent film they ever made. Yeah, what was and it? They, they really stopped doing silent films in 28. Modern times, that's right. Mm -hmm. So that's a fun one to watch, and you can see them. Bob has a picture, um, modern too, re recreated picture, mm -hmm. um, yeah. of them just walking down the highway, which is kind of neat. Right by the Mormon Church on the Sierra Highway. Mm -hmm. And you can tell you can tell where it is. It looks the same. That's, uh, <laughs> These Paulette trees Gunner. are still here. <laughs> he was married to her, Paulette Gunner. Oh, her. That was his wife. That's a good picture. Yeah, it's a beautiful picture. So yeah, so I guess we'll leave you with that one. I've had a question. Okay. Yeah. And Zimmer Zimmerman Ran Farm, whatever. What did they ever produce? Did they produce anything there? What did they do? What do they do? What farm? That's about, this is Bob's town. That's about Zimmer Farm Zimmer 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 Zimmer. Right down the road. Oh, yeah, you know what? I talked to the guy there. Um, he said it was just no big deal. It was They just had pigs, goats, sheep, um, oh, okay. um, animals, and they raised them. They did some farming there. But, uh, Are those structures there really old? It's one that's kind of built into the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looked like it was a packing shed or something. Yeah. So I couldn't get a lot of information out of them, but yeah. I'll try again. Is that which one? So we're in the corner from ours? Yeah. Oh, that yeah. one. Yeah. Where was the chocolate factory? Where was the what? What now? Chocolate factory? The first what? one we oh, had. Oh, the chocolate. Gave us the candy, candy store. I, the, somebody said, it says on there it's a chocolate factory. Yeah. But I, I thought it was like over in there. <coughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> I heard about it. But. Amazing. Oh, yeah. the area where they used to say it was full of diamonds, and people would come out and, where, where's that at? Uh, Escondido, on the bend in the road, before you get to come out. Yeah. <laughs> our, our, one of the guys working on my house when it was built, he said, you know you've got more under your house than your house is worth. <laughs> they have not obviously been in your house then, because Judy's got, they're another, they love like antiques and they have a lot of fun stuff there too. Yeah. But, uh, like I had the, the original farmhouse used to be at the bottom of my yard, and the tr original tree that was part of their out front of their barn or house is still there. Wow. In fact, the um, owls or the, the ravens made a nest and came every year, and then the owls moved in, and the ravens didn't right. come anymore. But the nest is about so big in that tree. Yeah, yeah. but I. I yeah, I know so, it's part of it's in that book, but... Yeah, yeah. so again, Heritage Happenings. So I don't know what we would do without that, that book and all the work she put into it. Um, cool. But I never found a dime. Oh, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are there geodes all over that? Are there geodes all over that? Yes. That's probably why. I'm sorry. So in Heritage Happenings, there's a poster that has Heritage Happenings on it. And it's like the Sirkegan or Sirkegian. I am not sure how to pronounce his name. Gembeds. Do you remember that page? No, I don't. It's like really striking. It's like a full page in her book, and it's a poster of like, um, Circadian. Uh, quartz crystals and isn't and that up, up, up around Hubbard? No, it was down from from what I understand, it was closer to that the Escondido part of that, like by Vasquez Rocks. By I think it's part of Judy's property. Huh. Yeah, from what people I, have, I, I always thought there was one on a. I think there was a couple of them up in the up. Off off the right right off the yeah, because it, it would have made sense for there to be, because we have a lot of um, rock crystal and a lot of really pretty stone out here um, that people would do. I remember even when I was a kid, there was a lot more good stuff on the ground, but people have kind of graded it. <laughs> um, but yeah, there probably was. This one, I think, was closer to where Judy is. I thought it was a little closer to the freeway, but they could have had, yeah. you know, they probably would have had a big parcel of land, you know. So, but that's another one we're working on, and and there's not really good. And I've even tried to look up their relatives, you know, because it's a very distinctive last name. It's like S I R apostrophe K E G A N or something like that. Um, and they have a business there, but it shows about it has a hand drawn map, but it's kind of everything.
everything's not really to scale, so it's like, yeah. oh, those over here. <laughs> so that makes it hard, too. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, and this one, I don't know if this is the Zimmer house or not. Where is but it? it looks like it does. It looks like it. It looks like it. Well, it does look like it. It's just a thermal. And this is another one. I happened to find this on the LA Public Library site, and I was like, oh, this is Yeah, right around the north of the new around the shop for the state of the highway. So this isn't the cute little white greenhouse in front, right? This is the you can get on the freeway. Yeah, you can get on the freeway. Yeah. Oh. Go around the Oh, okay. Go straight, you go on. Well, you said that Zimmer up there, or that big pasture. Yeah, it's all set stock, but nothing, nothing. I wish I could get it on the front of it. 